Hello, Conscient Podcast listeners. This is Claude Schreier. What you're about to hear is a compilation of one-minute excerpts from the 41 episodes of Season 2 of the Conscient Podcast. Now, 31 of these are in English, et 10 sont en français. So if you don't understand either language, you can find a written translation for each excerpt in the episode notes. I hope you enjoy this overview of Season 2. Thanks for listening, and see you in Season 3. Bonjour, chers auditeurs du Balado Conscient. Ici Claude Schreier. Ce que vous allez entendre est une compilation d'extraits d'une minute des 41 épisodes de la saison 2 du Balado Conscient. 31 of these are in English, et 10 sont en français. Si vous ne comprenez pas une de ces langues, vous trouverez une traduction écrite pour chaque extrait dans les notes des épisodes. J'espère que vous allez aimer ce survol de la saison 2. Merci de votre écoute et au plaisir de vous revoir lors de la saison 3. Episode 21 Dr. Todd Dufresne Capitalism is over. I think capitalism is over. But the problem is we have nothing to replace it with. And here is when we need our artists and others to tell us what kind of vision they have for a future that is different than that. Well, a future of play and work, meaningful work, would be one future that I think is not just utopic, but very possible. So there's a possible future moving forward that could be much better than it is right now. But we're not going to get there without the democracy of suffering as we're experiencing it now. And we'll at least over the next 20, 30, 40 years until we figure this out. But we need to figure it out quickly. Episode 22, Hildegard Westerkamp. Slowing down through listening. To allow for time to pass without any action and without any solution. And to just experience. And I think that slowdown is an absolute... If there is any chance to survive, I think that kind of slowing down through listening and meditation and through not doing so much, um, I think there's some hope in that. Episode 23 Anjali Apadurai What does a just transition look like? The climate crisis and the broader ecological crisis is to me... Uh, a symptom of the deeper disease. And the deeper disease, which is that rift, that rift from nature, that seed of domination and of accumulation and of greed and of of, uh, the urge to dominate others through colonialism, through slavery, through uh, othering. The root is actually othering. It's that is something that artists can touch and that's what has to be healed and when we heal that what could come of it what does the what does the world on the other side of that look like and in, you know in simpler terms it's what does the world on the other side of a just transition look like and i'd really like to believe it doesn't look like exactly this but with solar <laughs> The first language that colonization sought to suppress, which was that of indigenous peoples, is where a lot of the answers are held. Episode 24, Jill P. Weaving. The good, the possible, and the beautiful. The recognition and finding ways to to assist people in an awareness of all the good and the possible and the beautiful and those things that can lead is is one of the roles that that artists can specifically play episode 25 michael shaw a sense of purpose it's a real blessing 
to feel a sense of purpose at the, in these times. It's a real blessing to be able to take the feelings of fear and grief, etc., and actually channel them somewhere into running a group or to making a film or, you know, doing your podcasts. And I think it's important that people really tune in to find out what they're given to do at this time to really listen to what the call is in you and follow it. I think there's something that's very generative uh, and supportive about feeling a sense of purpose in a time of collapse. Episode 26, Seth Klein, Rallying Through Art. Here would be my challenge to artists today, and maybe to you too, Claude. Um, So... We're beginning to see artists across many artistic domains producing climate and climate emergency art, um, which is important and good to see. Um, What's striking to me is most of it in in the main is is dystopian about how horrific uh, the, the world will be if we fail to rise to this moment. And to a certain extent, that makes sense, right? Because it is scary and horrific. But here's what intrigued me about the artist, you know, what artists were producing in the war, is that in the main, it was not dystopian, even though the war was horrific. Um, It was rallying us. The tone was rallying us. Similar, you know, I, I found myself listening to this music as I was doing the research, and I was thinking, wow, okay, World War II had a popular soundtrack, and the anti-Vietnam War had a popular soundtrack, and when I was a kid in the peace and disarmament movement, there was a popular soundtrack. This doesn't have a popular soundtrack yet. Episode 27, Hélène Prévost, L'énergie créatrice consciente. C'est dans les temps de crise que, que, que les solutions émergent. Et moi, dans, ça serait mon argument. C'est dans cette solution de crise que, oui, il y a un discours qui va émerger, il y a des actions qui vont émerger, mais on ne peut pas les entrevoir. Peut-être qu'on peut les commander. Comme tu dis, oui, peux-tu me faire un documentaire là-dessus ou peux-tu me faire une, une performance qui va illustrer tel aspect? Mais le reste, je pense qu'il faut laisser l'énergie créatrice libre, pas, pas inconsciente. Et c'est là où, où l'éducation... Euh, les mouvements sociaux, les, euh, l'éducation, par, oui, euh, peut-être par l'action, et tu vois, je vais me contredire, je dirais, et par l'art, mais pas par l'art qui est servile, mais un art qui est libre. Puis j'ai envie, depuis tout à l'heure, citer José Blanchet dans Le Devoir, qui, a, il y a une semaine, disait « Moins l'art est libre, moins il dérange. » Épisode 28 Jimmy Hong Résilience et vulnérabilité. La résilience, au fond, pour moi, c'est d'avoir la capacité à être vulnérable. Et je, je crois que souvent la résilience est, est vue comme la capacité de, de ne pas être vulnérable. Et, et pour moi, le contraire, c'est, c'est plutôt que la résilience, c'est la capacité de, d'être vulnérable et, et, et de croire avec espoir peut-être qu'on qu'on a la capacité de, de rebondir, de revenir, de, de, de remonter, de renaître. Et, et je crois que c'est une manière de, de pratiquer la résilience qui est de plus en plus nécessaire, parce que si on veut avancer, il, il faut, si on veut apprendre et apprendre à désapprendre, il, il va falloir être vulnérable. Et, et donc de voir la résilience comme étant la capacité d'être vulnérable aussi. Episode 29, David Loy, The Bohitsatva Path. Some people would say, okay, we have a, a climate crisis, so we've got to shift as quickly as possible as we can from fossil fuels to renewable sources of energy, which is right. But somehow the idea that by doing that, we can just sort of carry on, you know, it, it, in, in the way that we have been otherwise. I mean, I think that's a misunderstanding. We have a much greater crisis here. Uh, it, and what it fundamentally goes back to is this sense of separation from the earth that we feel 
our well-being, therefore, is separate from the well-being of the earth, and that therefore we can kind of exploit it and uh, use it in any way we want. And and I think we can understand the ecological crisis as kind of the the karma built into that way of uh, you know relating and exploiting the earth. The other really important thing, which I end up talking about more often, is I think. Buddhism has this idea of the bodhisattva path, the idea that it's not simply that we want to become awakened simply for our own benefit, but much more so that we want to awaken in order to be of service to everyone. Episode 30, David Maggs, Art and the World After This. Complexity is the world built of relationships, and it's a very different thing to engage what is true or real in a complexity framework than it is to engage in it in in a in what is a modernist Western Enlightenment uh, ambition to identify the absolute objective properties that are intrinsic in any given thing. Everyone is grappling with the fact that the world is exhibiting itself so much in these entanglements of relationships. The arts are completely at home in that world. Mm. And so we've been sort of on, under the thumb of the old world. We've always been a kind of second-class citizen in an Enlightenment rationalist society. But once we move out of that world and we move into a complexity framework, suddenly the arts are entirely at home. And we have capacity in that world that a lot of other sectors don't have. And so, so what I've been trying to do with this report is really articulate the way in which these different disruptions are putting us in a very different reality. And it's a reality in which we go from being a kind of secondary uh, entertaining class to maybe having a capacity to sit at the heart of a lot of really critical problem-solving challenges. Episode 31, Charlie Moreau. Artists as reporters. Well, I think that artists are, for the most part, in tune with what's going on in the world. Uh, we're all reporters. <laughs> Somehow journalists who translate our me message into our art. As art is, in, in my mind, a, a readout. <laughs> I, dis I digested or raw readout of what, what it is that we're experiencing. And our wish to be an artist is, in fact, in order to be able to spend our lives doing that process. Episode 32, Shuni Tsao, Changer Notre Culture. L'engagement des citoyens, est-ce qu'il est nécessaire pour un changement culturel autour des actions climatiques um, Et c'est vraiment un changement culturel. C'est dans n'importe quel milieu, quand on veut faire des ch grands changements systémiques, il faut changer la culture. Et les arts et la culture sont des bons outils pour changer la culture. Episode 31. Peterson Toscano. What we're fighting for. It's artists who not only can craft a good story, but also we can tell the story that's the hardest to tell, and that is the story about the impacts of climate solutions. So it's so it's really not too hard to talk about the impacts of climate change, and I see people, when they speak, they, they go through the laundry list of all the horrors that are upon us, and they don't realize it, but they're actually closing people's minds, closing people down because they're getting overwhelmed. And not that we shouldn't talk about the impacts, but it's so helpful to talk about a single impact, maybe how it affects people locally, but then talk about how the world will be different when we enact these changes. And how do you tell a story that gets to that? Because that gets people engaged and excited because you're then telling the story about what we're fighting for, not what we're fighting against. And that is where the energy is in a story. Episode 34, Benedict Hamad. L'art qui nous amène ailleurs. 
Je pense aussi à des compositeurs qui composent des pièces à partir de relevés de température qui sont convertis en notes de musique. Et c'est comme ça aussi qu'on peut transmettre la question du, du réchauffement climatique, c'est qu'à partir d'une pièce jouée, euh, qui, qui vient traduire musicalement un climat stable et qui ensuite vient incarner en musique un dérèglement climatique, c'est extraordinaire, on vient ressentir par la musique, par euh, euh, tout d'un coup un fait de composition, quelque chose de très abstrait avec beaucoup de chiffres, avec des courbes statistiques. C est, c est, on est abreuvé de chiffres et de courbes statistiques. Elles ne, elles ne nous font plus rien, entre guillemets, euh, sur le plan sensible. Alors si c'est transposé en musique, si c'est joué, si c'est interprété, oh, tout d'un coup, ça nous emmène ailleurs. Et quand je parle de ces travaux-là, parfois à des gens plus scientifiques ou, ou, ou des directeurs du de musée, tout de suite, ils accrochent en disant ah, « c'est extraordinaire, avec la musique, on peut faire passer tellement de choses. » Episode 35 Carmen Salas Adapting to Reality I find that more and more artists, they are interested in Um, understanding how to change their practice to um, to adapt it to the current circumstances. So I really believe artists need help in this process, like we all do. I'm not I'm not uh, an environmental uh, expert. I'm not, I'm not a climate expert. I'm just a very sensitive human being who is worried about what we are leaving behind for future generations. So I'm doing what I can to to really be more ethical with my work. But I'm, I'm finding more and more artists who are also struggling to understand what they can do. And I think we need a conversation between curators like myself or producers and also people like you and thinkers and funders to come together and to understand um, the current situation, accept reality, and then strategize, find a strategy of how we can put things into place, how we can provide more funding for uh, different types of projects. Episode 36, Kendra Fanconi, Towards Carbon Positive Work. I know Ben Twist at Creative Carbon Scotland talks about the transformation from a culture of consumerism to a culture of stewardship, and we are the culture makers. So isn't that our job right now to make a new culture? And it will take all of us as artists together to do that. It's not enough to do carbon neutral work. We want to do carbon positive work. We want our artwork to be involved with ecological restoration. What does that mean? Uh, and so I've been thinking a lot about that. What is theater practice that actually gives back? that makes something more sustainable, that is carbon positive. And I guess that's just a conversation that I'm hoping to have in the future with other theater makers who have that vision. Episode 37. Anne-Catherine Lebeau. L'art régénératif. Pour moi, c'est sûr que ça passe par des euh, plus de collaboration. Puis c'est ça qui est intéressant aussi. Euh, vraiment pa passer du modèle comme « take, make, waste » à « care, dare, share ». Puis pour moi, là-dedans, là, y a, y a, y a, ça dit tellement de choses. Je, je pense qu'au niveau euh, qu'on doit considérer tout ce qu'on a dans le domaine artistique comme un bien commun dont on doit collectivement prendre soin. Souvent, au début, euh, on parlait en termes de euh, faire le moins de tort possible à l'environnement, ne pas nuire. C'est souvent comme ça qu'on présente le développement durable. Euh, puis en faisant des recherches, beaucoup en m'inspirant, entre autres, de ce qui se fait à la Fondation Ellen MacArthur en Angleterre, euh, en économie circulaire, je me suis rendu compte qu'eux parlent beaucoup plus en termes de comment faire en sorte de nourrir une nouvelle réalité. Comment avoir euh, créé de l'art qui soit régénératif, qui nourrisse quelque chose Episode 38, Shanti Sojourn Zenith, Arts as Medicine to Metabolize Charge. Art, creativity, any kind of action that takes us out of that um, pushing business as usual, 
need to try and control reality and, and, and almost try and like know what reality is. Um, art is the medicine that actually allows us to metabolize charge. Um, it allows us to metabolize trauma. It takes, takes that, that intensity that's left in the system and, you know, and this goes all the way back to ritual. I mean, art for me is, is sort of a, a tributary coming off from ritual that is still sort of consensually allowed in this reality when the direct communication with nature through ritual was, was silenced. Um, so it's still, it comes back to that wider river. Episode 39, Dr. Jane Engel. The integral role of the arts in societal change. The role of artists and culture is, is, is fundamental and, and so necessary, and we need so much more of it, and not, not only on the side. Um, the role of arts and culture in societal and civilizational change right now needs to be much more integral into, yes, yes, artworks and, and, imag and um, helping us to culturally co-produce how we, how we live and work together into the future. And that means works, you know, uh, artworks, and it also means artist perspectives um, into much more mainstream um, institutions, ideas, thoughts about how change occurs. Episode 40. Alexis Fraz, Integrated Awakeness in Daily Life. There is a lot of awareness and there's a lot of interest in ch making change, and yet change still isn't really happening at the, at least not at the pace or scale that we need. Um, and so it feels to me increasingly like there's not a lack of awareness or a lack of concern or even a lack of willingness, but actually a lack of agency. And so I've been thinking a lot about um, what is the role of arts and culture and creative practice in helping people not just wake up to the, to the need for change, but actually undergo the entire transformational process from, from that moment of waking up, which I think, you know, you and I share a language around Buddhist practice. And there's that, you know, idea that you can wake up in an instant, but integrating the awakeness into your daily life is actually a process. It's an ongoing thing. Episode 41, Jen Ray, A Preparedness Mindset. The thing about a preparedness mindset is that you are thinking into the future. And so if one of those scenarios happens, you've already mentally prepared in some sort of way for it. So you don't, you're not dealing with the shock. That's a place as an artist that I feel has a lot of potential right, for engagement and for communication and bringing audiences along. When you're talking about realities, accepting that reality, right, I think will, you know, has the potential to push us to do other things. Um, it's, it's great to hear about um, Canada Council, you know, changing different ways around enabling the arts and building capacity in the arts in terms of the context of the climate emergency. It is, it'll be interesting to see how um, artists step up. Episode 42, Mark Rosen. When the climate threat becomes real. The idea of enough is very interesting to me. The idea that the planet doesn't have enough for us on our current trajectory is at the heart of that. But the question of whether the planet has enough for everyone at the, on the planet if we change the way we do things is an interesting one. Can we sustain seven, eight, nine billion people on the planet if everyone, if everyone's idea of enough was balanced with that equation? Um, I don't know, but I think it's possible. I think that we, we've, if we've shown nothing else as a species, as humans, it's adaptability and resiliency. And uh, when forced to, we can do surprisingly monumental things and changes when the threat becomes real to us. Episode 43 David Haley Climate as a Cultural Issue 
climate change is actually a cultural issue, not a scientific issue. Science has been extremely good um, at identifying uh, the symptoms um, and uh, looking at the uh, way in which it has manifested itself. Um, but it hasn't really addressed any of the issues in terms of the causes. It has tried to use um, what you might call techno-fix solution focused problem-based approaches to the situation rather than actually asking deep questions and listening. Episode 44 Chantal Bilodeau. The arts are good at changing culture. I think of the arts as planting a seed um, and activism as being the quickest way you can get from A to B. So activism is like, this is what we're going to do. We have to do it now. This is the solution. Like, this is what we're working towards. And, you know, there's all kinds of different solutions, but it's, it's about action. The arts are not about pushing any one particular solution or telling people this is what you need to do. It's about saying, here's a problem. Let's think about it together. Let's explore avenues we could take. Let's think about what it means and what it means, not just, you know, should I um, drive a car or not, but what it means as in who are we on this earth? What is our role? How do we fit in the bigger ecosystem of the entire planet? Um, I think the arts are something very good to do that, and they are good at changing a culture. Episode 45, Jennifer Abbott. A compassionate, just, and sustainable world. The notion of reality and the way we grasp reality as, as humans is so deeply subjective but it's also socially constructed. And so, you know, as a filmmaker, and, and you know, this is relevant because I'm also a, a Zen Buddhist, you know, from both those perspectives, you know, I really try to explore um, what, you know, what we perceive as reality to untangle and figure out in what ways are we being, um, deluded and in what ways you know do we have clear vision and obviously the more clear vision we can have the better actions we take to ensure a, a more compassionate just and sustainable livable world so i'm all for sort of untangling the delusion while admitting wholeheartedly that to, to untangle it fully is impossible episode 46 dr marnie Badham. Creating artistic space to think. I think going forward, there's a lot that the arts can do. Um, philosophically, art is one of the only places that we can still ask these questions, play out um, politics and negotiate ideas um, further. Um, art isn't about communicating, um, you know, climate uh, disaster are, is about creating space for people to think through some of these issues. Episode 47, Suzanne Kiptu. Reconciliation to heal the earth. So in the work that I do or the book that I've just had published called We All Go Back to the Land, um, it's really an exploration of that original agreement and what it means today. So I want to remind Indigenous readers of our original agreement to, to nurture and protect and honor and respect the Earth Mother and all of the gifts that she has for us and then to um, introduce that original agreement to non-Indigenous Canadians or uh, others of the world that, so that we can together as um, a human species work toward uh, what I call the ultimate act of reconciliation to, to help heal the earth. Episode 48 Daniel Dany 
l'art durable. C'est comme de dire, on fait de l'art, mais c'est un art qui est tout d'un coup juste comme ça déposé. On n'essaie pas de montrer, on essaie de vivre quelque chose. Et, euh, oui, et de faire vivre des choses avec les gens. Euh, et donc, d'être sans être dans, être dans la zone de médiation culturelle, mais d'être dans une zone d'expérience, d'échange. Et donc, je ne contrôle pas, comme par exemple au théâtre, une bulle dans laquelle je contrains le spectateur à regarder et à focusser uniquement sur ce que je suis en train de lui raconter. Comment on peut se raconter la Terre? Comment on peut se raconter l'expérience terrestre quand on partage un lieu entre branches euh, glaise, euh, euh, pansements de réparation, entre euh, traces de la terre sur une toile ou soi-même euh, couché sur la terre, euh, peu importe, euh, euh, tous les éléments que qu'on pourrait apporter comme traces possibles d'une expérience partageable. Et de là, tout d'un coup, naît des images de notre partage de l'écologie. Episode 49. Clayton Windat. Holistic messages. If you task the art sector with how to make messages not about the crisis, but on the shifts in behavior that are necessary on a more meaningful basis. When the pandemic began and we had what, like certain products weren't on the shelves at grocery stores, but there was still lots of stuff. There wasn't, there was, you know, there was shortages, but there wasn't that much shortage. You know, how much would my life really change if half the products in the store were just not here, right? And half of them didn't come from all over in the world. Like they were just, you know, whatever made sense to have it available here and just having less choice. Like how terrible would that be? I'm like, kind of not. How can we just change behavior on a more holistic level and have it stick? Because that's what we need to do right now. And I think the arts would be a great vehicle to see that those messages really Hit, hit everybody and make a change. Episode 50 Tika Newton Imagining the future we want. There are so many amazing people across this country who are who are helping to make change and are holding such a powerful vision for what the future can be. We get, I think we get trapped in thinking about the paradigm limit in which we currently live. Like we, we put bounds on what feels like reality and what feels possible. There are no limits. <laughs> and the arts helps us to push against that limited set of beliefs and helps us to remember that, that the way that we know things to be right now is not fixed. We can imagine anything. We can imagine the future we want. Episode 51, Dr. Krista Heiser, The Emotional Wheel of Climate. What motivates me is talking to students in a way that they're not going to come back to me in 10 years with this look on their face. You know, Dr. Heiser, why didn't you tell me this? Why didn't you tell me? So I want to be sure that they're going to leave the interaction that we get to have, that they're going to leave with um, at least an idea that someone tried to help them see that reality. Episode 52, Dr. Annie Matani, Listening and Connecting. If we can find ways to encourage people to listen, that can help them to build a connection to you know, even if it's to a small plot of land near them, but helping them to, to have a new relationship with that, which will then expand and help, hopefully, to have a, a, a deeper and more meaningful relationship with our natural world. And small steps like that, even if it's only a couple of people at a time, that could spread. And, and I think that, you know, nobody, no one person is going to be able to change the world, but That doesn't mean we should give up. Episode 53. Dr. Tanya Kalmanovich. Nurturing Imagination. One of the, the larger crises we face right now is actually a crisis of failure of imagination. And one of the biggest things we can do in artistic practice is to nurture imagination. 
That's what we do. We, it's our job. We know how to do that. We know how to trade into in, in uncertainty and complexity. We understand um, the content inside of silence. It's unlocking and speaking to ways of knowing and being and doing that, that when you start to try to talk about them in words, it's really challenging because it kind of ends up sounding like bumper stickers. Music builds bridges. And I have a big problem with like universalizing discourses in the arts, right? As being like a concealing for a concealing structure of imperialism, colonialism. Episode 54, Ian Garrett, Empowering Artists. I don't want to confuse the end of an ecologically unsustainable, untenable way of civilization working in this moment with a complete guarantee of extinction. There is a future... It may look very different. And sometimes I think the inability to see exactly what that future is or plan for it can be confused for there not being one. And I'm sort of okay with that uncertainty. Um, And in the meantime, all one can really do is the work to try and make that, whatever it ends up being, more positive. There's a sense of biophilia about it. Episode 55. France, Trépanier. Un petit instant dans un espace beaucoup plus vaste. Là, je pense que euh, ce cycle-là euh, de, du colonialisme et de ce que ça a apporté, je pense qu'on est en train de, d'arriver à la fin de ce cycle-là aussi. Euh, et avec le recul, on, on, on va s'apercevoir, je pense que ça, ça, ça a été un tout petit instant dans un, dans un espace beaucoup plus vaste. Euh, et on est en train de retourner à des connaissances très profondes de qu'est-ce que ça veut dire de vivre ici, sur cette planète, ce que ça implique comme possibilité, mais comme responsabilité aussi euh, et de, de, de maintenir les relations harmonieuses. Moi, je dis euh, la solution au, à la crise climatique, c'est cardiaque. Ça va passer par le cœur. C'est de retomber en amour avec la planète. Tu sais, c'est, c'est, c'est ça, c'est ça le travail. Épisode 56 Anthony Garoufalis Auger Surmonter les injustices Ça va prendre des sacrifices et des, ça va prendre une implication énorme de, pour changer les choses. Donc peut-être de sortir de notre zone de confort va être nécessaire en, à, à ce point-ci dans l'histoire. Et je trouve ce qui est le fun de regarder tout le passé, l'historique de l'humanité, c'est que ça a pris beaucoup des fois pour changer les choses, euh, mais au moins on a comme des exemples dans l'histoire où ce que, en se mettant ensemble, on a été capable de surmonter, euh, ouais, surmonter les, les, les injustices euh, et des faut s'inspirer de ça. Épisode 57. Annie Roy. Offrir des consciences. Être créatif. Euh... C'est-tu aussi s'éloigner du monde pur à la source telle qu'il est, plutôt que de juste accepter aussi que on est bien petit puis qu'on devrait revenir à l'essentiel? Je ne sais pas si l'art nous ramène à l'essentiel versus nous ramène à dériver complètement. Peut-être que la créativité ou la création, ça nous amène tellement loin qu'on s'imagine vivre sur Mars dans une espèce de plateforme, pas d'allure, dénuée de... de, de, de tu sais, comme où est-ce qu'on n'aura plus besoin des oiseaux, puis des, des tempêtes, puis des ci, puis des ça. On va avoir recréé un univers de toutes pièces où est-ce qu'il fait donc bon vivre. Ça pourrait être ça, la part de l'art. Ben moi, je l'aime pas trop, cet art-là, tu sais. Episode 58. Stephen Huddard. The arts show us what is possible. This is now an existential crisis, and we have, in a way, um, a conceptual crisis. Like just understanding where we are mm. and what this is, this moment. Like all of history is behind us. Mm. Every book you've ever read, every battle, every empire, all of that is just there, right? just right behind us. And now we are in this position of 
emerging awareness that in order that this uh, that civilization in some form continue, uh, we have to move quickly. And the arts can help us do that by giving us a shared sense of this moment and its gravity, but also of what's possible and how quickly that tipping point could be um, reached. Episode 59, Judy Pearl. Positive tipping points. It's a national roundtable for the arts and culture sector to mobilize around the climate emergency. Um, so what, you know, a, a few months ago, uh, you and I and a few others were all kind of having the same realization that while there was a lot of important work and important projects happening around, you know, at the intersection of arts and sustainability in Canada, there lacked some kind of structure to bring these, this work together, to align activities, to develop a national strategy, and to really, you know, deeply, deeply question the role of arts and culture in the climate emergency and activate the leadership of the sector in terms of the mobilization that needs to happen in wider society. SCALE is really trying to become that gathering place that will engender that high-level collaboration, which hopefully will create those positive tipping points. Episode 60. Dr. Daniel Boutet. À la recherche d'un esprit collectif. En fait, collectivement, on est inconscient. T'sais, on cherche à parler de la conscience écologique, on cherche à parler de, de, de ça, mais en réalité, on est... S'il y a une psyché collective, ce que je crois, je pense qu'il y a une espèce d'esprit collectif, mais c'est un esprit qui est inconscient, qui est pas capable de se voir aller, de se réfléchir et donc euh, pas capable de méditer, pas capable de, de se transformer, euh, euh, donc soumis à ses peurs, puis à ses pulsions, puis tout ça. Je suis assez, je suis assez euh, pessimiste par rapport à ça, mais c'est que le deuil écologique, tout le chagrin, puis toute la peur est, est, est refoulé présentement. Il y a des activistes qui, euh, qui crient euh, dans le désert, qui hurlent, tu sais, puis, euh, puis les gens entendent, mais comme dans un brouillard. Tu sais, puis ça c'est pas suffisant pour, pour amener à une action collective. Donc, le deuil, il est loin d'être fait collectivement. Episode 61 Robin Sokolowski From Research to action. I think that there needs to be greater capacity within the art sector for research to action. And when I say that, I mean uh, the, the, the art sector itself needs to be driving policy. We need to have the tools, the understanding, the training, the connections to uh, truly impact policy. And One thing that mass culture is really focused on at the moment is how do we first engage the sector in what are the research priorities and what needs to be investigated together and what that process looks like. But then how do you then take that research uh, and uh, create it so that it drives change? <laughs> 